Hello! If you watched my last video, you will have seen that I used algebra to find that the max range of a projectile on even ground can be found if you take its initial velocity squared, multiply it by the sine of twice whatever your launch angle is, and then divide all that by your acceleration due to gravity. So today I'm going to show you how to deal with the situation of uneven ground. So let's say you have some ground and your gun, your cannon, your whatever, your projectile is being fired from some distance off the ground. So the ground isn't even. Where it lands will be different on the y-axis from where it was originally fired, okay? So we're going to call the distance above the ground h, okay? And we're going to say, once again, that the projectile is launched with some initial velocity, v naught. Now, it's going to be launched off the horizontal by some angle. That angle we're going to call theta. And we're doing all this algebraically so we can apply it to a variety of different situations. So we, we want to find max range. So this is when ground is even. Now we want to find R when ground is uneven. So what are we going to do? What we're going to do is we're going to do what we usually do where delta x, and this is really the same as r, because I defined the range as x, but delta x, which equals r, is going to be your initial velocity times cosine of theta, because that's the x component of your velocity, v sub x equals v naught cosine of theta, and v sub y equals v naught sine of theta, and I went over this in the other video, but this just is trigonometry. So times time. And the reason for that is we're going to have some initial velocity times time will give you distance. Velocity times time will always give you a distance. And then there's no acceleration here. There's no acceleration here because there should be no acceleration in the X. We're neglecting things like air resistance. So we just have velocity times time. Change in the Y. This is going to be equal to your initial height, okay, plus your velocity in the Y, which is V naught sine of theta, times time minus your acceleration because it's going to be negative if we assume this is the negative y, the negative y direction because gravity always points down so we're going to have negative one half times your acceleration due to gravity times time squared so then we have to solve for time you'll notice that we're solving for time and this is quadratic in time, so we can just use the quadratic formula where x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Because we have a bunch of constants here. I know they look like variables, but we know that the height is a constant. We know that the acceleration due to gravity is a constant, and we know if we assume that this is constant, that's, that it has constant velocity, then this is also a constant. So we can just say that time is equal to negative v naught sine of theta plus or minus v naught squared sine squared of theta minus, and I'm going to simplify this into 2g h, okay, because that's 4 times the negative half and the negative of that. So that should actually be plus 2gh. 
and then all over G because I actually just realized that there's a neg well there's a negative here and there's going to be a negative here so those cancel into a positive so then what now now we want to take this as being equal to v naught sine of theta over g plus the square root of v naught squared sine squared of theta plus 2g h all over g. All I did there was I broke up this fraction here and I also disregarded the negative root because we don't want to get a negative time. So we're going to get this positive here. Then we're going to say, we're going to substitute this, because that's T, into our word delta X or range equation. So we're going to have V naught cosine of theta times V naught sine of theta over G plus the square root of V naught squared sine squared of theta plus 2G H all over G. Okay. And then that, I can factor out a 1 over G, put it out here. So we have V naught cosine of theta of G. And then we have the quantity V naught sine of theta plus the square root of V naught squared sine squared of theta plus 2gh. And this is your final equation for R. It's about as good as it's going to get in a, in, in a sense. So if the ground is uneven, then what you need to know is you need to know that you have some uh, component of velocity in the X. Divide that by your acceleration due to gravity. Multiply that by the quantity, your Y component plus this term here, which is V naught squared sine squared of theta plus 2G H. Now it's a little hard to read too, but we're looking at V naught times cosine of theta divided by G, and that whole term multiplied by V naught sine of theta plus the square root of V naught squared sine squared of theta plus 2GH, where theta is your initial launch angle, V naught is your initial launch velocity, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and H is your height difference between where, between what you consider to be zero. So whatever you define as the origin, this is how high or how far beneath your origin the actual projectile is launched from. So I hope that made sense to you. Uh, so far I've done a episode on range on even ground and range on uneven ground and I plan to do some more concrete examples with numbers but I wanted to show everybody the algebraic way of doing this first get the equations and then we'll play around with the equations a little bit. So like I said I hope that you enjoyed this you can like and subscribe if you did feel free to comment down below on anything that you would like to see and stay tuned for more.